study on Wednesday. Amen. 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 Learning about the Beatitudes. Once again, what's Beatitude mean? It means let your attitude be like this. Amen. How many need an attitude adjustment? How many men your wife told you she was going to give you an attitude adjustment if you didn't knock it off? I know. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I saw something. I've always heard my dad say it, but uh, I think it's true. Uh, they say that a, a man uses, I think it's 7,000 words in a day. But a woman uses up to 20,000 words in a day. I believe that. Amen. <laughs> Why is that? Next week, 
Not everyone here is going to be here that is just born again and on fire for Jesus. Yeah. Not everyone here will have been raised in church. Not everybody here is going to understand what it is to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. So let's do our part in making sure that our lights are working properly throughout all next week so that we can come to church next Sunday prepared to let our light shine. Can you say amen? Let's do our best to make sure that our lights are shining. I don't know about you, but I want my lights to attract people. I want my light to draw people. I want my light to cause people to glorify my Father which is in heaven. So New Hope Church, let's pay attention today to make sure that our lights are shining so that this dark world can see those lights. Can you say amen? Now, number one today, the first thing is this. All of our lights are needed. Amen. All of our lights, not most of them, not 90%. All of our lights are needed. Whenever we hung the Christmas lights on the church outside, I didn't just get one little strand of 12-foot lights out of the shed, but I used all the lights that we had. If I only hung a 12 foot uh, string of lights uh, on those two pitches outside, it would look stupid, wouldn't it? It wouldn't look right. It looked like you just wasted your time putting lights up on the church. It doesn't look right. It would look funny. It would look awkward. But instead, we made sure that we got all the lights out of that shed, hooked them all up, and put them on the church so that it would shine properly. I want you to know that in order for this church to look appealing to the law, in order for our lights to shine bright that others would want to glorify our Father which is in heaven, we can't do so with just some of our lights here. Amen. We need all of our lights here and all of our lights shining bright. Amen. Why should we expect the lost to want to be in the house of God if the light don't want to be in the house? Hello, somebody. Why should we expect a sinner to be drawn to church when we can't even a saint to come to church. Amen. We're living in a day and age when a lot of people say, well, I don't need to go to church to be saved. Well, you don't need a parachute to jump out of an airplane either, but that parachute sure does help. Amen. No, I'm not saved because I go to church, but I go to church because I am saved. Can you say amen? If you're saved and you know it, say amen. amen. If you're saved, there's going to be a desire in your heart to be in the house of God. Amen. I don't get up. My flesh doesn't tell me when it's time to go to church. My flesh doesn't tell me, lift up your hands and worship God. No, no, no. My spirit does that. I'm the one that tells my flesh, no, you're going to go to church. You're going to worship God. You're going to have a positive outlook. You're going to bless the Lord. You're going to lift up your hands. You're going to shake somebody's hand. You're going to smile. You're going to be friendly. And some of these things don't come natural, but that's when the spirit has to roll over that flesh. Can you say amen? Well, it's not easy. No, no, no. The Bible says says that the spirit and the flesh, they are at war with one another. Here's how you determine who wins. Who you beat. If you start that flesh, the spirit will win. And if you start your spirit, your flesh is going to win. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, why don't I have victory yet? Why don't I have deliverance yet? Maybe you've been so busy feeding your flesh that you're neglecting your spirit. Amen. I'm here to tell you Hope Church. If you want your light to attract people, you've got to let that light shine. Can you say amen? We can't expect the lost to be here. We don't want to be here. A couple of years ago, Miranda and I went to Cambria to go horseback riding. Oh. And I will say, they put me on the biggest Clydesdale horse they had out there. <laughs> the big old big daddy. And I thought, why did they put me on that? And uh, sure enough, we going up that mountain. And that horse, man, I'll tell you, horses are strong. You ever hear that term? They're strong as a horse. Man, that was strong. That horse carrying this 150 pound man up that mountain. <laughs> Okay, 300 pound man of that mountain. Hey, Karen, you better not keep going up. I heard that. 
I'm sitting on this big old Clydesdale horse, and man, he's riding me up this mountain. And all of a sudden, I look at Miranda. I said, is your horse sweating? <laughs> I can see sweat coming, <laughs> dripping out of this Clydesdale horse. Anyway, that has nothing to do with the message. Let me get back on track. Here we are, me and Miranda and then Cameron. Before we went horseback riding, we decided to go into a, a little place to eat. And we walked into this little cafe called the Redwood Cafe. I, I don't know if anybody's ever been there in Cambria, but it's not a place I'd really just recommend. And uh, we, we walked in there and I, I noticed that it was lunchtime, but there wasn't a single person in that restaurant. And I thought to myself, man, this is nice. I like being secluded just by myself, just me and my wife. But uh, there was a reason people were not there. Amen. And uh, sure enough, uh, my senses uh, were wrong. And the reason people weren't there is because the food was bad, the service was slow, the kitchen was filthy, the bathrooms were dirty, and people were not friendly. Amen. I, I even bit into that I ordered it. How do you mess up a sandwich? We're crying out loud. I bit into like a ham and cheese sandwich, and I thought, this is the worst sandwich I've ever had in my life. I asked them for some ranch. They go and they get like that Walmart branded ranch out of the fridge. They just squirt it in a little cup for me, and I'm thinking, this is this ain't no restaurant, whatever. <laughs> anyway, but uh, but I thought to myself, as soon as I went in there, where is everybody at? And because nobody was there, it should have given me a clue that there must not be very good food or service there. I want you to know this, church. Whenever a sinner or a seeker shows up to the house of God, and listen, I'm not talking about people that are sick or people that aren't feeling well. God knows that. I know that. I understand that, but I'm talking about whenever we willfully choose to just sit at home, watch TV all day, meanwhile the saints are gathering to worship God. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Whenever a seeker would show up to church and they don't see fellow believers that are there, those same thoughts come to their mind. Maybe there's drama in this church. Maybe the spiritual food is bad. Maybe the people here aren't friendly. That that's why we need all of our lights to be here. Can you say amen? There's going to be a lot of people here next Sunday that don't know Jesus, don't know the power of the Holy Spirit. There's going to be here with some addictions. There's going to be people here with some issues, people here with some problems. But that's why it's so important that we be here, that our lights can shine. I want to show Oildale that there's still a lot of people here in this world that love Jesus with all their heart. I want to show this community there's still people here that know how to have a good time without a joint in their fingers or a beer in their hand. I want this world to see that there's still people that are sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit where they can weep and lift up their hands in the presence of God. Let's not just come to church just dead and all burned out. Let's come to the house of God with our light shining bright. If you want people to glorify your Father which is in heaven, you've got to make sure your lights are shining and they can't shine if they ain't here. The other day, Miranda had me on that two-story house. <laughs> poor house. Ooh, poor house. <laughs> Is that you, Robert, or Phil? It's still, still okay. <laughs> <I'm just playing. laughs> Matter of fact, last night, we were at the house and, and uh, Miranda said something to me. And I went like this. What'd you say? And Kate said, Daddy, you look like little Phil. <laughs> we like cousins. You know, we cousins. You know? <laughs> That's it. That's that look, Phil. <laughs> oh, but Miranda had me up on that, that house. You know how I got up there? I didn't climb a ladder. I climbed through the window. <laughs> I climbed through the window. Of the I'm just walking around like a fool up there. I'm hanging them Christmas lights. Amen. Well, I didn't just hang one little bulb up there. It would look stupid, right? It would look silly. It wouldn't look right. I had to get all them bulbs, connect them together, staple them up uh, to, the, to the fascia board. Why? Because I wanted my lights to be shining. I wanted them to look right. If you want your church to look right. You've got to be here in order for that light to shine. The more lights you have, the better it looks. The more appealing it looks to the lost. If the food here ain't good, nobody will come. Some churches are small for reasons. 
Seriously. Well, I mean, I'm just, I'm going to preach. Thank you, honey. I will. <laughs> you know why some churches are small? Not because they're just a holy remnant of people. Some churches are small because they don't know how to treat a visitor. Hello. Some churches are small because they don't know how to knit drama in the bud. Amen. Some churches are small because all they have is division, backbiting, and chaos. Amen. Uh, listen, I'm not saying a church success is not based on numbers. We, we understand that. God didn't call us to be a church of numbers. He called us to uh, be a church of acts. Can you say amen? But I'm here to tell you this. Uh, if there ain't nobody here, we better make sure that we're not doing things to keep people from ever wanting to come here in the first place. 1 Corinthians 12 and 14 says, For in fact, the body is not one member. Well, I am the church. Yes, you are, but one bulb shining by itself. People are just like, Psh. How much light does that bring? Not very much. Do you drive through Hagen Oaks to look at people's little, you know, porch lights on their house? No, no, no. You drive through Hagen Oaks to look at all the rich people put their lights on their houses. Amen. I'm just here to tell you, church, the body, this church is not just my light shining. It's not just Brother Justin's light shining. It's not just Brother Robert's light shining. We need all of our light shining brightly that the lost can be drawn to Christ. So we need to make sure that our lights are here. Number two, we've got to be connected. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say, we've got to be connected. We've got to be connected. And on this church, we've got about eight different strips of lights that are all attached to one another. The power ignites the first set of lights and everything connected to that first power, the power strip, everything connected to that power strip receives that light running through it. And that's the way it is with you and I. Christ is our power source. And as long as we stay connected to him and connected to one another, his light's going to flow throughout this house. How many want his light to flow through this house? Well, we've got to be connected to him and to be connected to one another. How do you think the early church shined as bright as it did? They were connected to the power source. They were connected in love. They were connected in unity. They were connected in mission. They were connected in purpose. They shined bright in a dark, depressed world as a result. And in order for New Hope Church to shine bright, we've got to be connected to the power source of Jesus Christ. If we become disconnected, we're going to lose our power. Amen. If we become disconnected from the, from the power source, disconnected from Jesus, we're going to lose our power. We're going to lose our ability to shine. We're going to lose our anointing. Let me tell you something. Didn't it feel good having the power of God just sweep all over this house this morning? Let me tell you, it only happens whenever you're connected to God and you're connected to one another. Maybe you say, well, I didn't feel anything. Maybe you ain't connected then. It's time to plug in, church. The power source is here. Quit saying, where's the power at? God says, I'm right here. All you got to do is plug in, get connected to God, and let my power flow through you. You've got a light, and you've got to let it shine. You've got to let it shine. Don't let offenses cause you to become disconnected from one another. Oh, hello, somebody. Don't let offenses cause you to become disconnected to one another. Don't let differences of opinions because that's all it is. It's just your opinion. Right. Yeah. To cause you to become disconnected from somebody else. Here's an important one. Most of all, don't allow Facebook drama to cause you to become disconnected from everybody else. Amen. More, I have had, I have seen more problems in this church. I'm not talking about any time recently. I'm just talking about in my going on now nine years as a pastor. I, every major problem that we've ever had here has come as a result of Facebook. Yeah. Trouble on here. No, they, they commented this or they did that. Sometimes, it is silly. Yeah. Do we not realize that there are spiritual forces at work? 
Hello, son. Do you not realize that Satan don't want to see people filled with the Holy Ghost? Hello? Satan don't want to see people saved. Satan don't want to see a church packed with people. So he's going to do anything and everything he can to ever see these things from happening. I'm here to tell you, church, in order for our lights to shine, we got to be here. And we don't just got to be here. We got to be connected. Yes. If you ain't connected, you ain't going to shine. Number three, don't be a bad bulb. <laughs> Hello. Don't be a bad bulb. After I got the lights hung up on that church, we noticed that certain sections weren't coming on. So what did I do? I got on YouTube. <laughs> And I discovered that if just one bulb is bad, it can stop a lot of the others from shining. I don't want to have to bend over to the bottom. Make plug that up for me. Ain't you glad for children? <laughs> You know what? I'm not really important. I don't need to be. I know the church is trying to reach people for Christ, but I don't need to be there. Hello? Oh, you know what? My buddy at church ain't going to be there. You know what? Sister so-and-so ain't going to be there. Y'all see what's going on? Yeah. Do you realize how much you matter? Do you realize how much you matter to the kingdom of God? Do you realize how much you matter to your church? Because when you're not shining, not only does it affect you, not only are you, you're disconnected. But now there's all kinds of people around you that ain't shining either. Why am I so hard on young people that don't want to stand there and worship. And I've always been like this as a pastor. Why is that? Because I've discovered that one person sitting down disconnects the Holy Spirit from flowing to everybody else around him. So what we need to do is we need to say, oh man, you know what? I matter. Amen. Get connected again. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I'm connected. Why do you think some people let God move more when everybody's here? It shouldn't be like that. We should just shine anyway, but sometimes, well, we ain't going to get excited about the Lord because there's not enough people here. If that's the case, you're worshiping people and not Jesus. Yeah. Man, there, there's still somebody here that ain't plugged in. Where are they at? Anybody know? <laughs> huh? The outside edge. The outside edge. Yes. Oh, you sinner, get back in there. <laughs> just kidding. Now we know you talking about us. No, I'm just. I knew he was becoming a Mormon when he went to Utah and he came back to Utah. <laughs> Be quiet, Joseph Smith. <laughs> I'm playing. If you can't have fun in church, I said, if you can't have fun in church, you ain't with your family. Maybe you think, well, this church jokes too much. Don't you joke with your family? I'll tell you, we're not just a bunch of people, guys. We're a family. Have some fun. I've done a lot. Oh, I found it. Was lost, but now I'm found. Man, you plug it back in. Let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, 
folks, sometimes it's not easy to get plugged back in. You're so used to plugging into the couch. The Raider game. The Raider game. You ever, anybody ever gone to the gym? Don't worry, we're almost done and I got 10 minutes. You ever gone to the gym before? And man, you're going really, really good. Starting to look in the mirror like, yeah, right. Yeah. Have you guys seen my dog? It's that big. It went that way. No, I never done that. Y'all done that. God saw it. Man, you going to the gym? You looking good? You feeling good? But then Thanksgiving comes. Oh yeah, yeah. And you just turn into a little fat boy, fat girl. Yeah. Come on. That gravy, just drinking the gravy. Hey, that ham was good, though. I did that the other day. It was good. <laughs> and you know what? When all you're doing is feeding your flesh. When I'm, saying, when I'm talking about feeding my flesh, I'm not just talking about eating ding-dongs and donuts. I'm talking about taking everything in the world that you no longer have a spiritual appetite for the things of God. When you're just sitting at home, not only are you not shining, but there's a section in your church is missing. Sometimes it ain't easy to get plugged in because your flesh don't want to. But sometimes you got to make yourself. Yeah. Amen. Like that song we sing, Gratitude. So I threw up my hands and praise you. I love the tag and it says, it says, come on my soul, don't you get shy on me. Yeah. Lift up your song because you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Sometimes you got to make yourself worship. Yeah. Sometimes you got to make yourself get out of bed and live life. Sometimes you got to force yourself to put a smile on your face and say, This is a day that the Lord Jesus Christ has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. God's put too much light inside of me for me to sit down, burned out, not shining. God says, Now's the time to get connected. Because when you're connected, you're all going to shine. But here's the tragic thing. Some of these still ain't working. It's made in China. That's the problem. <laughs> you do that with Christmas sweater. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's a prayer shop. <laughs> We need to get that comedian back. <laughs> Lonnie Pelly. <laughs> Central Valley's Clayton's comedian. I know this is silly. And we ain't leaving it. Don't worry, honey. She's like, he better not leave that there. Or... I know her. She knows. <laughs> this is silly, huh? We're laughing, having a good time. It's great. But listen. There's a lot of truth I learned from hanging them lights. When one's disconnected, there's others that are disconnected. You matter. Your flesh is you don't matter. Nobody notices if you're there or not. It's not true. I notice it. God notices it. But you didn't call me and tell me you were you missed me. I also don't want to harass you, too. <laughs> Hello, I've had people get mad that I called them. I'm not backslidden, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> i got to get this guy connected. Now it's, it's hard because now he's getting all bent up. Now he's bent out of shape. <laughs> They're really out of shape. Okay, I got five minutes. <laughs> now this wire over here, it's hard to see it, but there's a little prong that the electricity will run through. And if it's been out of shape, I can shove it in there all I want, but that ain't, ain't going to work. You've got to allow God to shape us and to mold us. But I'll tell you, if, if you're hardened in your heart, if you're hardened in your heart, that you don't allow God to mold you and shape you and bend you. Yeah. Well, I've always been a jerk. <laughs> That's an excuse. 
It's an excuse. It's time to let God be God in our lives. You've got light. Let God shape you. Let him mold you. See, you can shine like he's called you to. <coughs> this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, Hannah, will you help us? I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, yeah. Some of us, we just got this light shining, but we just like, Hello, can't see it now, huh? Knock it off, I already know. We've got a light to shine. A shine for Jesus. So next Sunday, when you see people here, they'll go, I ain't got no place to sit. <laughs> Pastor, I got an issue. That person, they looked at me wrong. I ain't gonna deal with it. Come on, somebody. I've been in this thing for 35 years. Raised a pastor. So. <laughs> Come on. Got a light. Let's let it shine. People ain't ever going to be drawn to Jesus if we ain't shining. Amen. Let's all stand. Uh, I'm going to ask if our, if our uh, uh, musicians... Uh, would come and let's just lift up our hands. I know this is a simple, simplistic message, <laughs> but it don't matter. I pray it was simple enough for you to understand. Maybe today you're thinking to yourself, I ain't got one bulb that ain't shining, I ain't shining at all. Whole oh, punch, miss. And I'm just, I'm, I'm in darkness. There's nothing going on in my life. A wrong tree. <laughs> <laughs> wrong <one. laughs> and this is all I am now. Look at all the potential I have. Man, I got green and orange and blues and reds. Man, I was created to shine. I was created that people could look at my life and say, look what God has done. But you're not shining at all. Why is that? You're not plugged in. You're not plugged in. If you want to live a life, if you want to be happy with your life, if you're tired of live, waking up every day, depressed, stressed out, anxious, and overwhelmed, Weighted down by sin. You've got to get your light. Get your light. Take it to Christ. And you know what? I'm going to plug into you. You may still have a few bulbs that ain't shining, but that's all right. God will keep working on you. He ain't going to give up on you. He won't give up on anybody. Thank God for that. If you're here today, we're almost done. need Jesus. I'm not shining like I need to. I, my light isn't shining. The power source is here. He invites you to get plugged into him. With every head bowed, all the eyes closed, closed nobody looking around and whatever. Father, I preach what you laid up on my heart. I had even thought heavily about not even preaching this message today because I didn't I didn't think it would do anything help anyone but God I know you've spoken to hearts today so Holy Spirit draw right now draw every runner back to you Prodigals, may they return in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch our hearts. Give us, give everyone an opportunity to respond. If you're here today and you say, I don't know 
Jesus. I hate my life. I'm not satisfied with the direction my life is going. There was, maybe there was a time in your life when you were shining, but you've had one bulb in your life burn out after another, and now they're nearly all out. I tell you that Jesus is here today, and he can exchange that burned out bulb for a brand new shiny bulb. Whatever you need from God, he's your answer. Your answer isn't found in the world. Your answer is found in Jesus. It's not found in pleasures, drugs, alcohol, perversion, another man, another woman. That's not what you, you need Jesus. You're disconnected from the power source. And you're trying to plug into everything else, but you still ain't shining. There's only one that can make you shine. His name is Jesus. Plug your life into him. If you're here today and you said, I need God, I want you to come. I want you to come, and by coming, you're making a public declaration before before God and before everybody else. Say, I need Jesus today. Let me tell you something. If I was drowning, I wouldn't complain about the person that was trying to rescue me. Right. If you're here and you say, I need Jesus, I just want you to come and just stand up here. I just want to pray with you. Lead you in a little prayer. Without God, you'll die in your sins. You'll end up in hell one day. And no doubt, at the white throne judgment, God will replay this opportunity right now that you have. And God will say, I threw out the lifeline, but you ignored it. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Cry out to Jesus today. Oh, I'm too sinful. I'm too dirty. God doesn't care about any of that. Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Lord. Let's sing one more song before we dismiss. Dolores already knows pastors are going to do something in G. <laughs> Love you, sis. Hallelujah. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again.
Jesus. All right. I pray that the Lord has ministered to you today, helped you today. Let's let our lights shine. Amen. Remember tonight at 5, a prophecy update. If you are interested in the coming of the Lord Jesus, well, if you're watching and waiting for his return, you don't want to miss tonight. Amen. It's going to be a powerful, powerful update. And uh, maybe, maybe, I feel like this about all of them. It could be the most important prophecy update I've ever done. Amen. Praise the Lord. So remember tonight, uh, 5 o'clock, come expect a wonderful time uh, in the Lord. Amen. Uh, I'm going to ask if Brother Rick would dismiss us in a word of prayer. God, we ask you, Lord, that you just be with us, God, as we go our separate ways, God, and bring us back again. 